Look at that. Completely flat. Flat Earth. Yeah. So as I talked about before, I'm not a helio believer anymore, I'm more flat earth because they continue to show me evidence that there's a flat earth. The math makes sense. The, the debunction of NASA and all the lies makes sense. And here's another one. So let me ask you a question. If they didn't find Antarctica until the mid 1800s, then explain to me how, the, how they had Antarctica on maps created in the 1500s. Like, make that make sense to me. So what I'm getting at is how can you make something up if you haven't seen it all yet, right? So again, if they didn't find Antarctica until the mid-1800s, Yet, all the maps previous to that showed Antarctica on those maps, then how can you call it a sphere? Because that tells you that you haven't discovered all of that sphere yet. Just more lies. Yeah, what a roller coaster ride, right? I mean, you know, like they say in all the videos, you know, we've been educated in, with indoctrination of. You know, all of these things, you know, a, a, a three-dimensional world and, you know, all of these were flying through Earth and the Earth is spinning a lot, da, 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 da. And when you, I guess as you grow, when you get more of an open mind, you become more of a logical and critical thinker, right? And I think that's what we all need to do. We need to question everything, especially nowadays, right? I mean, ever since basically 9-11, you know, we, we all started questioning things. And then, you know, a lot of the false flags come out and then we catch wind of other things, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that's what we need to do as people. You know, we want to <laughs> trust our government all the time and what we're finding out in the last 15 years is it's all a lie they all lied to us right and that's an unfortunate affair so i'm like you man i was like fighting it and you know i was like man you know come on blah 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 blah. but started watching the videos you know they started debunking you know the globe the sphere they started showing logic and mathematical equations to debunk and and if you're like me and you believe in the Bible and you believe in you know a heavenly father the Lord Jesus Christ the flat earth does tend to always tie back to flat earth right so anyway so I feel you man I feel you and I think thousands and thousands of other people do the same so we just got to keep on keeping on and hopefully, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll change more minds. Good luck to you. As we all know, Google and, you know, everybody sends out these cars throughout the country that have these, you know, eight, nine, ten foot tall cameras on top of them. And they drive up and down every road, every little crevice of the streets that we could possibly do. Um, and that's what gives us our mapping system. But um, we do also obviously have what we call satellite balloons. There is no satellites out into outer space. Uh, but we do, and it's documented, it's all over the place, that we have satellite balloons. Okay, so 
and, and we don't live in a sphere you know we don't live on a globe but we do live on a circle and that circle is a lot like a quarter or a coin or like a tabletop it's two-dimensional not three-dimensional like they want you to believe but yes to answer your question we do have Google that helps us with our mapping and we do have satellite balloons hope that helped you out. did you know that NASA in Hebrew means to deceive and that NASA was formed only a year after Admiral Byrd's death who literally proved a flat earth not to mention an entire civilization of Nephilim living in Antarctica did you also know that 95% of all NASA images are all CGI meaning that they're absolutely fake they're not real pictures of space and that we're supposedly orbiting around the sun at 66,666 miles per hour. <laughs> and now after all these years, they found the technology to be able to land on the moon. If you're still listening to NASA at this point, you're in big trouble. So it's time to get into how thick is the flat earth. But for the record, I am a biblical earther and I know there's different theories out there on the flat earth. I go by what the Bible says the earth looks like and it looks like this. Is it clear? Now, I can attest to what other people think the Earth looks like, but I have heard that some people think it's just a thick plane. I am not going to challenge that. What I am going to talk about is the biblical Earth. When biblical Earthers say that the Earth is flat, we aren't talking about its width, right? We are talking about the surface. The plane of the Earth is flat. Genesis goes on to explain that we are underneath a dome called a firmament. So we look like we're in a bubble underneath the water. The Bible talks about the flood gates of heaven, which are in the firmament. It talks about God placing the sun and the moon in the sky inside the firmament. And this is what we mean when we say that the sun and the moon are local. They are within the firmament. They aren't in outer space. That's fine and dandy, Tippy, but how thick is the earth? That was the original question. For this, we need to go to scripture. Proverbs 25 has our answer. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Now, you can check out other translations and variations and see what the Greek and Hebrew said, but the story is the same. Um, there is no space exploration, no one knows how high the firmament is, and no one knows the depths of the sea. Period. Y'all watch this. I'm going to show y'all that radar does not curve around a surface or an object. It goes in a straight, flat plane. We've all seen one of these before, right? This is a world weather radar map. It shows all the clouds and all that that the radar has picked up. If the Earth is round, how did the radar pick that up? Because radar doesn't curve, it goes straight, line of sight, flat. How did it get all that? I'll prove to you it doesn't curve. Watch. I want to show you all that radar does not curve. This is radar. And that's a hill. Notice there are no cars coming. I'm sure there's traffic on the other side of the hill, but you will not get a signal until a vehicle reaches the hill crest, meaning the radar does not curve over the top of the hill. There's still no signal, it should be right here. There it goes. Oh, and look, there's a vehicle top of the hill. So tell me again how we curved a radar around the Earth to get that. We probably didn't. If the Earth was a globe, then there wouldn't be any flat Earthers. If the Earth was actually a globe, then there wouldn't be anyone online trying to sit there and debate and say, hey, no, I don't think it's a globe. Do you see what I'm saying? The debate is there because the model is wrong. The debate about whether the Earth is a globe or it's flat only exists because the globe model is wrong. 
because independent researchers who have flown cameras up 90,000 feet, who have taken pictures from vantage points, who have seen things that they should not see that should be under curvature, they've done all this and they've come to the conclusion, the undoubted, the inevitable conclusion that the earth is flat, that there is absolutely zero perceivable curvature in our realm. We do not have curvature in our realm. Now, I understand that's really hard for a lot of people to grasp, but there's also another thing. Most people are very uninformed, and most people are very weak. They have no personality, they have, they have no backbone. So when they're uninformed about something, and they hear someone speak about a subject, when there are sides to choose between this or that, they always choose the majority. They always side with the majority because they couldn't physically defend their opinion. They couldn't intellectually defend their opinion. They couldn't defend anything. They have no personality. So due to that fact, they're going to cower and they're going to go along with the collective. Now, no matter how wrong it feels inside, no matter how wrong it feels instinctually, they will still go with the collective because they are weak. So guys, instead of just insulting me in the comments and going off and saying this and that and this and that and that I'm stupid and uninformed, try for once to verify the things that you were taught. Try for once to verify the things that you were taught in school. Because I promise you, if you try to, if you try to prove to me that the earth is a globe, you will undoubtedly become a flat earther. It is what it is, folks. Polaris doesn't move. It's fixed. It stays in a fixed position and all of our stars rotate counterclockwise overhead about one degree every 72 years and according to the globe model our earth is tilted on a 23.4 degree axis and it's wobbly so if our planet is wobbling are you guys telling me that polaris is also wobbling with our planet at the exact same rate exact same speed come on guys <laughs> that doesn't make any sense you see? You see how the visible light from the sun spreads and eventually stops. You know, it reaches a certain point and it kind of fades out. See, it's fading out. Now it's cold. Red light, red and yellow light, radiation. Cold blue light, magnetism. There's the moon. You see that? Now, one could argue that that's reflecting the sun's light. I mean, it's making a shape that kind of matches where the sun would be, right? But the sun's light has not reached that point yet. It's, it's not like the trees are, oh, well, the trees are obstructing your view, so you can't see from perspective. No, guys. Come on. You can see the light physically stopping. It doesn't matter how high they are in the atmosphere. The light from the sun has not reached the moon. It is reaching the moon. Every lighthouse in the world proves the earth is flat. Uh, we're going to read this together and then I'm going to leave you with the website and you can check it out yourself. But every lighthouse in the world proves the earth is in fact flat. For example... The Igiro Lighthouse in Norway is 153 feet above high water and visible from 21.6 statute miles, where its top should be 158 feet below the horizon, but it isn't. The Chennai Lighthouse in India is 187 feet above sea level and visible up to 32 miles away, where it should be 495 feet below the horizon, but it isn't. The curvature formula drop in feet is 0 0.6666 times distance in miles squared. Every single one of the 14,000 lighthouses all over the world is proof that the Earth is flat. Check this out. So we got 15 NASA research papers that admit a flattened non-rotating Earth, right? We got number one, NASA's reference publication. All right, this was entitled Derivation and Definition of a Linear Aircraft Model. This assumes the Earth is flat and non-rotating, produced in August 1988. The publication detailed obscure concepts such as rotational acceleration and Earth relative velocity. 
or to a layman how planes lift off, fly over, and land upon the earth, immediately following the cover page and index on the very first line under summary, we see this. This report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating earth. And now, then we have all these. We have all of these NASA documents, all of these flight documents. These are real. Listen, the numbers are on there. You can go online and look these up. These are real things that NASA has put out. This is what I mean. They put it in our face. The problem is most people don't research it. And then the people that do research it, we tell people and then people just go, oh, that's, oh, that's not real. And we get laughed at. Maybe you're a florfer. <laughs> I'm like, really, we're, we're trying to help, man. We're out here trying to help. They've been lying about it for a long time and they've been throwing it in our face. I mean, watch this. This is another example of them telling us exactly where rockets go. Watch this. Me to Bermuda. somewhere that hasn't been discovered yet. Will he ever come back? Who knows? Who knows anything? You can prove it so easily, and one of the ways is with lighthouses. All right, lighthouses, sundials prove a flat earth, the Georgia Guidestones proved a flat earth, the North Star proves a flat earth, the North Star never moves. You can stare at it all night long, it never moves, ever. It's been there for, for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. Some people say it moves the teeny tiniest little bit. You never notice. It never goes anywhere. If we were spinning all over the place, a thousand miles an hour, then 66,600 miles an hour, then 500,000 miles an hour, you would, that would never happen. We've been lied to. We are trying to help and take the help before TikTok gets banned. I'm, I'm telling you. Because after that, <laughs> it's up to you. Did y'all know that the National Geographic Society says that the temperature of the Earth's inner core is about 5,200 degrees Celsius or 9,392 degrees Fahrenheit and is made out of molten lava? So allegedly, the temperature at the deepest part of the ocean is zero to three degrees Celsius or 32 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And it is miles closer to the core of the Earth than the land that we walk on. So how does that work? So allegedly scientists dug a hole and it's called the Kola Super Deep Borehole. It was nine inches in diameter at 40,230 feet. It's the deepest hole in the world, allegedly. It took almost 20 years to reach the seven and a half mile depth, only half the distance or less to the mantle. Among the more interesting discoveries, microscopic plankton fossils found at four miles down. The Kola hole was abandoned in 1992 when drillers encountered higher than expected temperatures, 356 degrees Fahrenheit not the 212 degrees that had been mapped. So to put it on a scale for you where you can understand it a little better, this is the Kola hole right here that's 40,230 feet deep. This right here is the Mariana Trench, 36,201 feet. It's the deepest point in the ocean. Can someone please explain to me how it is zero to three degrees right here or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but yet at the bottom of this hole that's only a couple thousand feet more, it's 300 something degrees Fahrenheit. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to leave you on this. With that information, the fact that allegedly the bottom of the ocean is miles closer to the core of the earth, should that water right there, shouldn't it be boiling hot? Good evening. Aloha from Florida. So I was wearing my Gleason's Map shirt today and I went into a place of business. After a few minutes of being in there, the cashier noticed me and she ran out from behind the cash register and said, I love your shirt. And I said, oh, you know what this is? She said, I sure do. I have that map hanging on my wall at home. So we proceeded to have a good conversation. Uh, if you want the shirt or the map itself, high resolution, go to Eddie Allen Carr's channel. That is Flat Earth Banjo USA Japan. Also remember, Eddie is the author of 16 Emergency Landings Proving Flat Earth. I highly recommend that book. It is a death blow for the globe religion. Remember, the earth is flat. It's an absolute scientific fact, but there's a lot more than just that. We have been lied to about geography, yes, 
astronomy, yes, and history as well. Time to start researching reality. Have a great night. God bless. It came in the mail and y'all are opening it with me. <laughs> Flat Earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al Biruni, and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri, from Russia, with suggestions of mine, Idiol Enkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle, and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.